How's it going guys? Welcome back to Blake Check. If you're new to the channel, my name is Blake. It's nice to meet you. And if you're interested in my perspective as an early EV adopter, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. Now, if you've been following along for a while, you'll be familiar with these two electric vehicles behind me. This is my 2018 Tesla Model 3 Performance Stealth Edition with the Test Bros Halloween package on it. We'll go over that in just a little bit. And then over here we have my wife's 2023 Volkswagen ID4 Pro S with the roof box that I have paint matched on the roof right now. I recently made a video where I went over how that roof box impacts range on our electric SUV. If you're interested in that, it'll be linked in the description below and in the top right hand corner of your screen. But today is all about the Tesla. Now, about a year ago, I did a video with my Tesla where I talked about the boombox feature that comes equipped on newer Teslas and how that was recalled so that now you can't use the external speakers that comes equipped on newer Teslas to emit custom sounds above a certain speed. And in that same video, I presented to you guys the GlideSphere external speaker, which is a third party external speaker that gets around the recall and allows you to once again make those custom sounds come out of your Tesla. Speaking of which, hey Siri, open Tesla frunk. Let's take a look at that GlideSphere external speaker right now. This is the GlideSphere external speaker I was talking about, accompanied by this ambient lighting that I added to my Tesla's front that's not included. I just added that to kind of make the speaker pop. I think it looks really good when it's all put together. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think about this setup. But in my last video where I featured the GlideSphere speaker, I showed you guys the old version that was wired. You used to have to take a USB cable and kind of run it through this groove into the cabin of the car and attach that to your phone in order to play sounds out of the speaker. But GlideSphere recently introduced this new updated wireless design that I'm super excited about. To be honest, I didn't love the wired version. So for the most part, this speaker has lived in my garage storage for the past year or so. But with this new wireless design, there's no cables or anything all over the place and it's super clean. So I'll definitely be using the speaker a lot more often. So what I'm gonna do in this video for you guys is show you guys quickly how to set this up. And then I'm gonna do a quick demo with this new GlideSphere speaker setup to show you guys what the GlideSphere speaker and what the GlideSphere app can do. All right, so what I've gone ahead and done is disassembled my setup so I can show you guys the installation from start to finish. There's really two parts to this setup here. There's the stuff that's gonna go in the front. That's the speaker, the amps, and the power source for those things, of course. And then there's the stuff that's gonna go in the cabin. And that's mainly just the OBD2 device, the OBD2 dongle, and then the on-off switch and various adapters for your phone. So what we're gonna do first is install the stuff in the cabin, that's the OBD2 device and dongle, and then we'll come back and install the speaker in the front. So the first thing I'm gonna do before I get started is actually turn off the car. I'm not sure this is something you necessarily have to do for this installation, but I always turn off the car before I touch any of the electronics in my Tesla, just as a safety precaution. You could also unhook the 12 volt battery to be extra safe. I'm gonna leave it up to you guys to determine whether you guys want to do this or not. When I did the initial installation, I turned it off and then afterwards I didn't have any issues. So that's gonna be up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and press this button found in the safety menu at the bottom to turn off the car. And then I'm gonna set up the camera so you guys can see where to access the OBD2 port in your Tesla Model 3 or Y. It's actually behind the center console here. So I'm gonna set up the camera so that you guys can get a good view. So the next step is gonna to be to use a plastic pry tool to take off this plastic covering that is protecting the OBD2 sensor behind your center console here. Um, as you can see, it comes off pretty easy. You just need to find a little catch in between the center console and the plastic covering and then it should pop right off. You just want to be gentle as you are pulling it all the way off um, and then set that aside so it's out of the way. And as you guys can see, the OBD2 um, port is exposed there. That's really all there is behind the center console. Um, so of course, the next step is going to be to detach the existing port here and ignore my dad grunting noises as I do that. I'm contorted all sorts of ways in the back seat for you guys. So now that you guys can get a better look, you can see um, that the OBD2 um, port is exposed. So what we're going to be doing is actually interrupting this connection with our dongle that is included in the kit. Here's how that looks. So you'll notice that 
This piece on the dongle matches that piece there. So this piece is going to go into the part with the green dot on it. And then this other end is going to connect to the original part in the car. So I'm going to stop talking and do that for you. And you'll notice the wires kind of bend as you do this because there's not a whole lot of space in here. Um, that's okay. It's really not going to hurt anything if the wires on the dongle bend a little bit. Um, but that's what it's, what it's going to look like whenever this is installed correctly. Um, so this is the other end of the dongle. This is what the OBD2 device is actually going to hook into. So that's what I'm going to do next is plug that in. Make sure that you guys can see it okay on camera. And you'll see as soon as it's plugged in, uh, it comes to life. Um, so let's talk about this real quick. So this is actually what's going to make it so that the external speaker can react to the car's behavior. So as you're pressing the accelerator, um, the speaker is actually going to increase acceleration noises from um, the sci-fi noises that are installed in the GlideSphere app. Um, whatever sound that you're actually using in the GlideSphere app will react accordingly because this is now reacting to um, your actual inputs in the car. Um, the older version is, and I'm out of breath because I'm like bent over the backseat, um, but the older version used only GPS. That's still an option if you don't want to use this OBD2 sensor. Um, it'll still be wireless, um, but I like this because it makes it just a little more realistic. Um, so once this is installed, the next step um, is going to be to connect it uh, to your phone via Bluetooth, just like any other Bluetooth device. Um, once this is turned on, um, you just would press this button that you can see right here. Let me give you some more light so you can see it better. This button down here. I'm not going to show you guys that part on camera. There will be a link in the description if you guys want to see um, the portion of connecting the OBD2 Link MX device to your smartphone um, in the description. Um, but it's really straightforward. It's just like connecting your headphones. Once this has power and once you press this button, the OBD uh, Link MX device will come up as an available device to connect to your smartphone in your Bluetooth settings. Um, but again, if you guys want to see that portion, it'll be linked in the description below. Um, so now that this is all installed, you just need to close it back up. Um, you kind of want to tuck the OBD2 device out of the way outside of the plastic covering. Um, in case you need to reconnect it to your phone so that you still have access to that button um, without having to remove the plastic covering again. So I'm just going to kind of shove these cables together a little bit. Again, not a big deal on the dongle device. Um, to kind of push it together. I wish that was a little more graceful, but like I can barely see over the camera, but that's really all there is to it. All right, so part two of the installation is just putting the external speaker back into the front. Like you guys saw at the beginning of this video, the OBD2 sensor portion of the installation was really the most complicated part of the installation, especially if you're not used to um, opening up your car, taking off plastic panels and unhooking electrical things. Um, if that part is scary, the good news is that is the worst of it and it's behind you. You made it, congratulations. Um, now's the easy part. We're just going to set the speaker back inside. I guess the only thing to take Take note of in this part of the installation is kind of the wiring setup for everything underneath the speaker so I'm not an audio engineer let me preface this by saying that I barely know what I'm doing here all of this stuff should come pre-installed for you so you shouldn't have to worry about plugging things into things um, but because I was upgrading my old setup which was wired to this new setup that's wireless I did have to replace the small amp that came on my original speaker um, so that part was just taking what was here off and then attaching this wire that you can see here to the large amp that's directly connected to the speaker here um, so I will show a still frame 
of the wiring diagram, if you could call it that, here on screen. Um, if you're in that same boat so you know where everything goes, um, the other side of the small amp here is power. So you'll see this cord comes out of the small amp and that's gonna go to our external battery that's over there. Um, and then the other side of this larger amp over here is power for the speaker and for the large amp. That is also gonna go to the external battery. But that is all there is to it. Really, once everything is plugged up in here, the way you see it in front of you, all you have to do is set it inside the car however you want it to look. Um, what I usually do is take the external battery and kind of hide it underneath the speaker and use it as a prop to kind of lift up the speaker a little bit. That's what you guys saw at the beginning of this video. That's why you probably didn't see the external battery originally because it was underneath the speaker. So that's how I'm going to set it up again. Um, but it's your car. It's your speaker if you order this so you can set it up however you want. So a couple more things to take note of before we put the speaker in the front is that we want to make sure that both amps are at max volume and in the on position. This is in the on position whenever the switch is flicked up and then you'll see that this one is already set to max and this one is in the on position whenever this button is pushed in like that. So this is all set and ready to go. Um, one more thing to take note of before we put the speaker in the car is that you want to connect the BTW3 emitter that is going to plug into your smartphone, whatever you're using that has the GlideSphere app installed to send sound and driving data to the speaker. You want to make sure that that is connected by Bluetooth to the small amp. It should connect automatically. But in case that doesn't happen for you and you're having some trouble with that portion, I'll have a separate video provided by GlideSphere linked in the description and in the top right hand corner of your screen for you guys to check out. Um, but without further ado, let's go ahead and throw the speaker back into the front. All right, so now that your GlideSphere speaker is all hooked up and ready to go, it is time to start playing with our new toy. The first thing you'll want to do is turn on the speaker by sending power to that external battery that's in the front right now with this little remote that comes with this kit. So you'll see there's an on button. I'll just tap that. Um, if you are outside of the car or if you have your windows down, you should hear like an audible pop from the speaker. That's kind of how you know that it's turned on. Um, the next thing you'll want to do is make sure that your BTW3 device is plugged into your smartphone and you'll also want to pay special attention to the blue light that's on the BTW3 device. When it's a solid blue like this, that's how you know that it is connected by Bluetooth to the small amp that is on the speaker in the front. Um, one other thing I want to point out while we're looking at kind of my setup here is that, of course, there are a bunch of different adapters here plugged into my phone. And that is because the BTW3 device is USB-C. And as you guys know, iPhones, except for the new iPhone 15, I guess, have the lightning port. So I had to add a bunch of these adapters so that I could plug it into my phone. Um, if you guys are using an Android device, you should be able to plug this directly into your phone. And I guess if you're using the new iPhone 15, you should be able to plug that directly into your phone. I don't know if they have some like proprietary stuff that makes it so you can't plug it in. I would not be surprised. I wouldn't put it past Apple to make this as complicated as possible. As you guys can see here, I had to jump through loops in order to make this work. But now we're all set up and ready to go. I'm going to throw the screen recording on the screen for you guys to take a look at so you can see what I'm doing. Before I open up the GlideSphere app, I'm just going to check my Bluetooth settings to make sure that I am connected by Bluetooth to the OBD2 device. As we can see there, it is. So I can open the app now. And then the next thing I'll do is go to the top right hand corner of the app and just make sure that I have my settings on so that the app is responding to the OBD device rather than to GPS. As you can see, you have both options there and you can actually also check the box at the very bottom that adapts the acceleration to speed. So that just means that the volume is going to go up and down according to how much input or what speed you're traveling at in your Tesla. Um, I keep it off because I kind of want it just to be loud all the time. Um, but if you want it to be even more accurate, you can check that box. So next thing I want to do is show you guys all of the different sounds that you guys can play 
from the GlideSphere speaker through the GlideSphere app. There's a bunch of different options here. I'm going to showcase a few of them for you, but I would be here for an hour if we were to go through all of these sounds. I'm just gonna go over my favorite ones with you. Um, but let's go ahead and start with the Maserati sound. That one's really cool um, because it's just like an engine noise, which you don't expect to come out of a Tesla or any electric vehicle, of course. So let's go ahead and tap that on. I'm gonna put um, some visuals on the screen for you guys so you can hear from the outside and see from the outside what that looks like. <laughs> So that was pretty cool. I always get a kick out of that and get a kick out of people's reactions to that noise coming out of my Tesla. The next one we'll take a look at is the Jet Suits Flying Car. You guys know what that is. For copyright reasons, of course, GlideSphere can't put the actual name of what this comes from, but use your imaginations. It's the Jetsons. I don't think I can get in trouble for telling you what it is, but I'm gonna turn it on. And this one's really interesting too. If you guys have seen the Jetsons, if you guys are as old as me, then you'll be super familiar with this sound. Let's check it out from the outside of the car. So I really like that one as well. Um, there are a bunch of other really cool sounds here to take a look at once you get into this app. If you guys don't even have the speaker, I think you can still download this app. There's a monthly subscription to access the sounds, um, but if you don't buy the speaker and you just want to play these sounds out of your Bluetooth from your car's internal speakers if you want, um, that's an option for you too. Um, but I like the uh, Testarossa, I also like the Ramborghini. Um, but the last sound that I'm going to showcase for you guys in this video is my all-time favorite. It's the one that I pretty much keep on all the time when I'm using the GlideSphere speaker, and that is the warp field. So what I'm going to do for this one is show you that same camera angle that I showed you from the first two demos, but then we're also going to go for a drive. <laughs> Alright you guys, that's going to do it for this video. If you liked what you saw, leave me a like below and subscribe to the channel for more. One last thing I wanted to comment on before I wrap things up is the Test Bros Halloween decal kit that I have installed on my Tesla. The kids in my neighborhood get a kick out of this every single year, and if I'm being honest, I look forward to Halloween every single year so that I can install this on my car. If you want one for your Tesla, it'll be linked in the description below. Be sure to check that out. And of course, the GlideSphere speaker will also be linked in the description below if you guys want to pick one up for yourselves. But that's all for today. Thanks for watching. This has been Blake Check. And that's a wrap.